Okay, today we're going to be going over some overclocking settings that I use for my 9900K on my ASUS motherboards. Uh, they're pretty universal. I use them on both my Extreme and my Maximus 11 formula um, within a, a few minor voltage points, if you will, uh, for the settings. But uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you where I currently got my settings. Um, the current sentiment score. And that kind of thing and then we're going to jump into the bios and play around i'm going to show you exactly how we've got everything set up let's dive in so here we are in bios i'm going to start off by showing you where i have my settings and why and then we're going to reset them back to stock and i'm going to show you how you do a simple overclock to 5 gigahertz and then we're going to jump to 5.2 since I leave mine running at 5.1 all the time uh, and I'll show you how and why. But, so first off here's where I'm at currently. I actually used my XMP Profile 1 okay, and what that did is that set my RAM uh, to its current overclock settings of 3600 uh, as you can see up here as well as my latency settings which they're not the greatest settings but as you get higher in the speeds the timings get a little looser and that is at 1.35 volts i'll show you here in a second i actually have my multi-core enhancement set to enabled so there's no limits set on them uh, it's defaulted at auto uh, i haven't i didn't play with any of these things i just left these alone at default for this vid behavior as well as the avians AVX instruction offset. Now for the ratio, I went and took it from auto to sync all cores because I'm all wanting on the same frequency for what I'm doing anyway. So I've got them set to 51, which means uh, 5100 megahertz or 5.1 gigahertz. And then my frequency was set uh, for my RAM by, um, by the XMP profile. I went ahead and I enabled the X, the extreme tweaking. By default, this is de, uh, this is disabled. And then um, my DRM timing control. Now this is where, this, again, this was all set by the XMP profile. So I didn't have to do anything with those. Um, I went into here and this, I changed this from auto to, eight, to uh, level eight. And what this is, is, I'll just read this real quick. It says, the load line is defined by the Intel VRM specification and affects the level of voltage supplied to the price processor. Higher load line calibration settings result in reduced V-droop at the expense of voltage overshoot and will increase CPU temperatures due to higher voltage under load. Select from level one to eight to adjust the load line slope. Level 1 equals greater V-droop. Level 8 equals minimum V-droop. Obviously, performance is dependent on the CPU model used. Do not remove the VRM heat sink, which I would not do. And then I went and I took the CPU current capability up to 150%. And what that does, that's the voltage regulator. So it sets the shutoff current limit for the external voltage regulator. A higher setting will allow the voltage regulator to supply more current while a lower setting will cause a voltage regulator to shut off the system when the supplied current is higher than the set value. <coughs> and it says to configure higher values when overclocking or using high current demanding stress tests. So I picked 150% for no other reason than I didn't want to max it out. And then to the DRM, uh, DRAM current capability, I, trained, I ramped that up to 130% uh, for the same type of reasons. Uh, you can read here in the um, the uh, description. That's one thing I really like about the ASUS motherboards is they, they tell you what you're doing, right? Uh, and then I left everything else auto in here. I didn't get into playing with those. Uh, it was as far as the internal CPU management, again, I left everything auto. I didn't touch anything. Tweakers uh, Paradise, same thing. I left it at auto. I don't play with a lot of this stuff, uh, partially because I'm, I don't need to. For what I'm doing, I'm not looking for world records. Frankly, I don't know what half of it is. If I played around with long enough, obviously I could figure it out. I just am not going to because I don't really care at this point. Um, these are set up to auto here. Now, here's where I've gotten this manual stuff. I did settle on 1.325 
uh, volts on the core. Okay, and then obviously my DRAM voltage was set at 1.35. Again, that is set that way by the XMP profile, which matches the settings for the, uh, the RAM rating. And then, um, I didn't play around with anything else. So what I'm gonna do real quick is just make sure that I do have this saved for one of my profiles, and I believe I do. I have a 5200 saved also. So I have got 5100 saved to profile one. I'm gonna load from one. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and that, that's where we're at right now. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and default everything back to um, stock. And oops. And what you do is you load optimize the defaults by hitting F5. Since I saved that, I can go back and fix that all, right? So I got everything back to stock now. And here's what stock looks like. Oops, that slowed down a little bit. Real straightforward. So it says, okay, here's what we're gonna do. And, and everybody I think is familiar with what their current uh, settings or what a, a, a 9900k should do under default settings. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and overclock this to 5 gigahertz. So the first thing I'm going to do is set this the uh, XMP profile for my RAM. Personally, the first thing I do. Secondly, I'm going to go ahead and remove all limits for the multi-core. And then, so these are what things look like. So I just want you to see this as I'm going here as to what I'm doing and why. Uh, I'm going to set the Core ratio to sync all cores. We're going to send the uh, five gigahertz or fifty, or fifty for the fifty or uh, five thousand megahertz. Um, extreme tweaking. I'm going to go ahead and put that to enabled, like I said earlier. My timing control is already set by my XMP, as you can see there. Uh, power control. This is where I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to move this up to the load line level. I don't know, level six. Not that I need to, but. Um, that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna move this down to uh, 130. Current, I'm gonna do this to 150. And then, I didn't do anything in there, it took paradise, no. And then we're gonna go down here, and we're gonna manually set, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna leave it at auto to start here, and here's the reason why. I wanna show you how I might play with figuring out what I think my voltage is going to be for overclocking. Okay, as it's booting up here, one thing I forgot to do was set the armory crate to disabled because by default Asus has armory crate downloading to your um, hard drive, which drives me nuts. It should be disabled by default. Uh, come on Asus, let's think about this here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is typically I go in for, you know, making sure I've got the best overclock or whatever. I shut things off, extensions, things that don't need to be on, right? And I'm gonna show you how it can affect your score pretty substantially here in just a second. So first thing I'm gonna do is open up hardware monitor, and then I'm gonna open up CPU-Z. And then we're gonna also open up um, Cinebench R15. Um, yes, I can do the R20, but I think people are more familiar with the R15 results uh, and how that should look in their mind, right? So first things first, got these open. So we can see that it's got my voltage at 1.279. So that's kind of a good starting point. So I know, okay, in my mind, 1.279 is a good starting point or 1.275 for the voltage. It's got my clock set at uh, 5,000 megahertz. And you can see where my temperatures are sitting. You know, again, low 30s, but it's got a lot going on in the background, so that does affect it. And I'm gonna hit run here, and this is important because my score is not gonna be amazing right now. It's because I'm gonna have a whole bunch of stuff going on in the background, which is going to affect my store. Like if I were to have, and I don't have my voltage locked or any that kind of stuff, but if I were to have, let's say, Explorer open right now, that's gonna suck up more CPU little but it sucks it up so it affects your score 
So it gives me a score of 1898, okay, right off the bat. And again, that's not playing with the core voltage or any of that kind of stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a couple things here. I'm gonna shut off uh, OneDrive. I'm gonna shut off GeForce Experience. Uh, shut off uh, Easy Update. Um, I'm gonna leave TeamViewer running. I wanna show you what that does to your system as well here for performance, which is kind of crazy. Uh, I'll shut off Razer Synapse. And these are things I use for gaming, right? I'm just gonna show you how these things play into your score, which is crazy, but they do. So it's almost finished up here. Nineteen sixteen. All I did was shut off some stuff. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shut off Team Viewer. Yep. We're gonna shut off IQ. We're gonna shut off the rest of Synapse. I'm literally gonna shut off everything that's running right now. Close. I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna make sure I don't have anything running in the background beyond what I. Okay. So. This is important. Now this also takes up some stuff, so it won't give me a perfect score, but it should be slightly higher than my last score. And you're gonna see that here in a moment. And then we're gonna go ahead and, and lock in the core voltage. I'm guessing I'm probably gonna do the voltage around 1.27-ish. See if that holds stable for, uh... yep, there we go, 2010. All I did was shut things off. So there were comments made in some of my previous videos. Why are my been scores so low? Well, it's because I had a whole bunch of stuff running in the background. I shouldn't have, but I did. Um, so just FYI. And I use this also to try to judge myself. Okay, where do I need to be for my, my voltages? Well, it maxed out at 1.288, which is going to give me some of... I'm going to get that from my load line calibration. So I'm going to go ahead and... Close this, save. No, I don't want to override it because I, I do want to save it. And we're going to reboot into BIOS. And we're going to make some minor changes here. And we are back to the desktop here. And I do have, I set it at the 1.270 for my core voltage. And you can see where it's sitting at right now. Right now it's brought it down a little bit because there is fluctuation when you set those hard points, right? So I'm sitting at 1.26, uh, which again is perfect, I'm fine, I, it works great. You can see it up here, vCore 1.261. And that will change a little bit here as, actually I'm gonna bring this a little bit larger so you can see hopefully more data. Um, I'm going to minimize that a little bit, okay. Um, so you'll see these things kind of bounce around just a little bit here. I'm going to do it right there. Go ahead and run this. And now my pat, my score, uh, my temperatures are not up into the 70s. They're in the 60s under full load, and that's because I've got my voltage down at 1.27 versus 1.325. So very important to note that I get a CPU score of 2009 and that's with a couple things running here but very consistent nonetheless. Uh, obviously it's not my same score that I had, um, well the last one was 2010 so I guess that's pretty close but it's not the same score that I have at the 5.1 but very comfortable there. I, I'm sure I could tweak this and I could figure out where I really want it to be. Uh, if I wanted to leave it at a 5 gigahertz overclock versus a 5.1, I could dial it in. It wouldn't surprise me if based upon this, if I were to send it around 1.26 somewhere. Um, I think I've got a pretty good um, chip here. It, it seems to be behaving very well. I haven't played around with other apps yet, but still, this is a really good indicator. I could go on and run an A to 64 and that would give me a really good indicator of if I was really pushing for it. And I know where it is in the 5.1, but anyway, let's go ahead and let's boot it up and let's try for the um, 5.2. So you can see 
what I do to try to get there. Okay, here we are back into um, this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple things right off the bat. First, we're gonna go to 52. Oops. Okay. I know that last time I had your own 1.38, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try that now. Um, and we're gonna change my load line from six to level eight. And we're gonna go ahead and reboot this. Okay, here we are at the desktop um, with my machine running at 5.2. Just to show you in CPU ID where we're sitting at as well along. Again, this takes up more stuff, but it's, it's a nice tool to use to view, be able to view everything. So my voltage is sitting at 1385. I went and I remember I, I said at 1.38, so it's automatically brought it up to 1.385 and it's even capped out at 1394. That's due to the CPU load line level um, and the ramp up that it's caused by this. But the nice thing is my cooling is keeping the, the cores nice and cool at the moment, 5.2. And we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna run Cinebench here. Now, I don't know if I put enough voltage on this or not. I can't remember if I needed it to be at 135 or 138, which is where I'm sitting at now. But um, you get a good idea as to if this is stable or not. I believe this was a stable number. I did a lot of testing. You can hear the fans really ramping up because you can see my temperatures jump up into the upper 70s and low 80s. My voltage jumped up to 1. Point, well, it's at 1385, so maybe that is the number I need to sit at. Um, core is 5200. It gives me a CPU score of 2086. That get, this is just simple method of overclocking. You can see what it does though. I mean, my word, my max temperature Highest core out to 86 degrees. Lowest was at 79. So pretty consistent in getting that. It's got to do with the water. But you can see where my clocks are at. So we're gonna go ahead and try it one more time. Um, actually, I'm gonna run this one more time. I don't know if it's gonna do anything different. Um, I'll show you an attempt at 5.3. Um, I'm not gonna push it too hard. I don't expect it to actually I guess more because I haven't pushed it, but we'll try a, uh, a 5.3 just to see what happens. There we go, same score, 2086. So I guess there's consistency on that at 5.2. So we're going to do that real quick and be right back. All right, here we are back in BIOS, so we're going to go ahead and give it a try. So let's go 53. Baby. And let's go down here to my core and let's go to 1.40. That's high. Oof. Reboot. See what happens. All right, it's trying to boot. I guess that's the first step. Does it boot? Looks like the answer is yes. So we're at desktop. All right. Let's see where things are sitting. Oh, I gotta kill processes again. Oh, well, that's fine. Whew. 1.403 voltage, 5300. Um, sitting in the 30s due to my cooling. All right. Let's see what we can do. Close. Again, I'm not real optimistic on this because I haven't tried to push it to this yet. and So I'm just kind of guessing. I guess I could have tried to run it with these things. It would just give, would have given me a little benchmark score, but I'm not even sure if I'm going to get a score, I guess. 
Might have at least opened it. Moment of truth. This is at 5.3. Run. Let's watch these temperatures. Oh! Upper 80s. Couple of them hit low 90. Ah, oh, and I crashed. <laughs> I'm not hitting delta of 100 degrees or whatever. 105, I think, is the thermal delta. All right, we're going to go back in. I'm going to boost the voltage up just a little bit and see what happens here. Oh, wow. Went to BIOS. I'm surprised. All right. Back at desktop. Voltage is at 1.41. My God, is that high voltage. Temperatures are still not sitting nice idle. Um... I'm going to do that just so we can see a little bit more of the cores. And here we go. One more truth. Let's see if it hits it. So far it's running. Fans have kicked in. And it said no. I got a big F you from my uh, processor it looks like. Well, interesting. Locked. All right. Back at desktop, I think it's the last time I'm going to try it at the 5.3. <sighs> See what happens here. So temperatures immediately jump up. Voltage jumps up. I'm at 1.415. It's recognizing at 1.43 right now. I don't know. This might get through. Holy buckets. Nope. Close. 1.42 would probably do it. I just don't want to go any higher in the voltage. Temperatures, low 90s. Well, maybe I could. We'll see. Okay, this officially is my last try at this. I I don't want to go. Then at 1425 for the voltage. I have the, the water cooling for it. I just, ugh. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Do I blow up my computer or not? Hope not. I didn't even get as far as last time. I think it's just too much voltage. Ain't happening. Well, we tried to get to 5.3 gig on the uh, core. Just didn't happen. I went all the way up to 1.425 volts. As you go higher in clock, the voltage amount continue to go up and the heat exponentially increases. However, I was able to show you how easy it is to get to five gigahertz and at low reasonable temperatures on the uh, on 9900K, how easy it is. And I use it stable at 5100 every every day, 1.325 and the temperatures are awesome. The idle in the low 30s typically and under load for gaming, I might sit in the mid to upper 40s. Um, if I'm doing some rendering, uh, it might get to the low to mid 50s, best case scenario if I'm like I'll want to render this video. Um, 5.2, also easy to hit. Uh, I don't daily run that, is I don't want to um, put an undue stress on the on the CPU because heat heat is what kills your system. It's what kills your CPU. It kills your components. So. While it's easy to get to the 5.2, which is freaking amazing. I mean, think about it. If you're running the 7700K prior to this or the 8700K prior to this, I mean, if you got to 5.0 gigahertz on your core, that was like the holy grail of, of, uh, of CPUs. I mean, that was ultimate uh, silicon lottery winner right there. You just really couldn't push it any higher than that consistently. I daily drive at 5.1. I mean, that's just a, amazing. Anyway, I hope that this helps show you how simple it is to overclock uh, a, a CPU like this. Uh, you do need to have the appropriate cooling uh, on mine. Um, I'll list it in the, in the uh, comment section. But I mean, I've got uh, two 420 radiators uh, using Noctua industrial fans. That's what's cooling just my CPU. That's what keeps it nice and cool. Yes, it's a little overboard. I don't need that much because in my test bench, I've got a single 240 that I'm able to overclock and hold at 5.1 on that also. 
Uh, but this is just way overkill because I want it to be hot and silent. Uh, regardless, simple to do. Hope that helped. Hope those settings were easy enough for you to see. I am using a 4K monitor. I know it's not always the easiest to see, but hope it worked. If you got questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like the video, you know what to do. If you didn't like the video, you know what else to do. Uh, please hit that subscribe button and have a great day. We'll see you next week.